and gentlemen, we would like to thank the presence of Your Excellency, the Air Chief Marshal, Mr. Sohail Aman, the Chief of Air Staff of Pakistan's Air Force. Your Excellency, we're so happy that you could join us here today. Your support is very important to us. Now, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we also have another guest of honor who's here with us all the way from Canada. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this man is very vision inspired, his mission focused and also very values driven. And he oversees one of Canada's most diverse communities. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about the leadership and community engagement next. Please allow me to invite to the stage the Chief of York Regional Police of Canada, Mr. Eric Joliffe. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a big round of applause. I hope you're doing well today. Amelia, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, very kind introduction. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, delegates, and speakers. I had the privilege of serving Canada. Ontario and the residents of York Region for almost 40 years and as a chief of police for the last eight and it's a, a very distinct honor and a privilege for me to speak uh, on behalf of the men and women of York Regional Police from Ontario, Canada. I extend greetings and gratitude for your kind invitation to join you at the, this conference. I do want to thank uh, ASFAR and the organizers of this conference uh, for being such gracious hosts. And my hat goes off to those who have organized this conference because I know how challenging and difficult it is to put an event on like this. And I think uh, that uh, and their team, I think Asfar and his team, deserve a round of applause. <laughs> a very special thank you to uh, Samir Dolsal uh, of the Canadian Pakistan Business Council, Anur Ahmed Khan for coordinating my pack filled trip to your country. Since my arrival to Pakistan on Sunday, I've had the honor of meeting the governor of Sindh and staying at his compound. I've met with the CPLC in Karachi and the chief operations officer. And for my discussions, I appreciate the work that is being done in their, in their areas. Also had the opportunity to speak to the Rotary Club of Karachi, visited the head office of FPCCI, and the honor, the very distinct honor, of ringing the bell at the Pakistan Stock Exchange. It has been very, very rewarding being here. The hospitality has been outstanding, and the meetings most productive and this has been a very rewarding opportunity to build on future collaboration. I have felt safe, and it is obvious from the discussions yesterday and today that Pakistan is on the move. Now that you have listened to uh, some incredible speakers, I feel very honored to be given the opportunity to, to address you. As a leader, I prescribed to the theory that if it's predictable, it's preventable. And from my perspective, disrupting the future also requires some prediction. And the context that uh, I will approach this topic is through the lens of policing a global community and the importance of community engagement to ensure healthy and safe communities a Canadian perspective. The community in which I serve was established in 1971, and I'm pleased to share with you citizens from cities like Islamabad, Karachi, Lahore, Rawalpindi, and Peshawar are among 
many, many residents that live in our area, in the greater Toronto area, and in fact, over 160,000. And for some reason in my travels this past week, everyone I've spoke to seems to have a relative in the greater Toronto area. And I'd like to highlight two organizations that work closely with York Regional Police and we share a strong partnership. The Canadian Pakistan Business Council, led by Samir Dolsol, who promotes trade and commerce between Canada and Pakistan and other global markets by fostering connections among the public and private sectors. You may like to know that last year, Canada and Pakistan did merchandise trade that well exceeded over a billion dollars, and that has happened for the last three years. The other organization, Canadians of Pakistan origin in Ontario, a non-for-profit group, unite the Pakistan and Muslim communities with other cultural communities in Ontario while promoting understanding, national laws, and human rights. And in my community, this organization has raised funds for hospitals in Ontario, but also here of the Shawakat Khanum Cancer Hospital in Lahore and Peshawar. In addition, our police service has twice hosted the National School of Policy from Lahore, and we are very proud to host the Consul General and the Pakistani consulate in my community. And in 2005, you may be interested that my police service raised $25,000 for victims of the earthquake from the Kashmir region. Needless to say, our police service has a significant connection to this community and the Pakistani diaspora in our community. Now these comments lead up to the subject of policing a global community and its connection to building healthy and safe communities. Canada is a large geographical area. It covers 10 million square kilometers with a population of only 35 million. Canada is 11 times larger than Pakistan, but homes only one sixth of its population. Our nation is blessed with the abundance of natural resources and immense beauty. We are also blessed with an excellent system of education, a democratic form of government, and one of the world's best healthcare systems. As you know, Canada has opened its borders to the world and have shown the world that despite our many differences in language, culture, religion, customs, and traditions, we not only live together in peace and harmony, we thrive and prosper and learn from each other. In fact, Canada now boasts an immigrant population of 7.7 .7 million people. The community in which my police service resides is in York Region, geographically only about 1,750 square kilometers and is home to 1.3 million people. But by 2031, the population of York Region will rise to 1.7 million one of the fastest growing communities in Canada, and three quarters of our community will be newcomers, the majority coming from Africa, Asia, and South Asia. There are over 100 different languages spoken in our community, and well over 275 religious institutions. We are indeed fortunate to have a microcosm of the world as a community and we strive to capitalize on every opportunity to learn and better understand the diverse communities we serve
to ensure that they feel safe and secure. In 2011, I conducted significant research around the perceptions of police of those coming to Canada from Africa, Asia, and South Asia, and found that there are some significant distrust of, of police for a variety of reasons. And I think it no surprise to anyone in this room that there are people in our communities that may not trust their police. And I've also come to learn that many new Canadians may also be afraid or distrust police because of their own personal experiences. Knowing that 66% of my community will have come from all parts of the globe, and by 2031, the future state of police community relations likely could be predictable unless the change occurs. And to disrupt the future and what it might look like. From a leadership perspective, I decided to do a master's thesis on how York Regional Police can enhance its relationships with newcomer, diverse, and vulnerable communities in York Region. Through this research, I identified some challenges and opportunities for my agency. By providing broader based community engagement, we'll foster a climate of trust. Addressing internal culture will help sustain healthy relationships. Community trust and confidence can be accomplished through collaboration. And police recruitment and language will also have an impact on community engagement. As a result of these findings, a number of recommendations were developed to specifically address community engagement, organizational culture, and building trust and confidence. Frankly, trustworthy police are seen by the public to be effective, be fair, have shared values, interests, and a strong commitment to local community. Since 2012, we have been heavily engaged and committed to community outreach and educating those residents who may have had a historical culture of distrust of police. To assist in this regard, our officers have attended thousands, literally thousands of community events, religious events, and celebrations each year. The object is to build relationships in a positive and respectful manner in an attempt to gain trust. By educating communities on the role and the responsibility of police, we have found by attending and hosting events that there are more important things that need to be done to build on trust. In fact, we host or attend hundreds of cultural celebrations each year and thousands of citizens have joined us at events that we host. And here is just one celebration the we hosted as Europe an example. Is to ensure that citizens feel safe and secure through excellence in policing. With the motto, Did Speak, their mission is to make a difference in the community. Today, our focus is on how these objectives are achieved. We also bring you moments from the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, one of the most exciting events that celebrates diversity in the greater Toronto area, organized by York Regional Police. If you have not built trust and confidence in communities for the things you do, the likelihood of community and members of community stepping forward to work in partnership to make sure York Region lives its mission, making sure that people feel safe and secure. If you're not able to build those partnerships, things are going to go adrift here. So for us, diversity becomes one of those things that it's uh, at the forefront. One that uh, we continue to develop programs to um, interact 
with our diverse communities. We also hope that in the long run, everybody else will go out and do their own events to show that we all live in harmony, in peace, and that racism plays no part in our lives. Today is really the culmination of a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, it's uh, the recognition of uh, International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. So here we are, I think, in sharp contrast to that moment in time where we have our York Regional Police who are marking the day, and I can tell you this is one way of saying we, we need to stamp out racial discrimination, but it's also a day to celebrate the wonderful diversity that we have here in the city of Markham and in York Region. We are the most diverse city in all of Canada. It's, that's what it's all about. That's what anti-racism is all about. Harmony, living in harmony, living in peace, loving one another. We are the primary organizer of this event, an event that we've been doing for the last 13 years. So our uh, opportunity to connect with our community, an opportunity to actually, uh, uh, we hope, to unite a community, to bring community together. So uh, as a police service, we see it, uh, say our, our significant uh, duty to ensure that we build trust and confidence in a community. And this is just one of many things that we do as a police organization to do that. The York Regional Police organizes a few events to engage members of the diverse communities, including the Black History Month and Asian Heritage Month celebrations. I think it's good for the region of uh, York Regional Police to take the lead and organize the event that bring people from the very diverse community coming together, not only Markham, but throughout York Region. We have over 100 cultures in York Region, and we are all here to celebrate it in spite of what our culture is. I've been a member of York Regional Police for the past 25 years, and over that period of time, I've worked with, uh, with uh, Chief Jolliffe in a number of different capacities. He understands diversity and he understands the importance of diversity in policing a global village like York Region. The, the commitment to diversity in this organization starts at the very highest levels of the organization and filters down. So we see it as part of our duty to build partnerships. Uh, as a police organization, uh, as you know, we can't do it alone. To do what we do every day, requires a community that uh, supports its police service. It is great to see the York Regional Police working in partnership with the community. It is imperative for the police service to have a relationship with citizens based on trust, understanding and mutual respect. Just as importantly, we also are educating our officers about the different cultures in our region so we can connect with our citizens in a meaningful way that is respectful. And we do this by partnering with our immigrant communities to host officers to learn about their culture and traditions. As an example, our staff attend educational sessions on diversity where leaders of various communities speak to us about culture, global events, and local concerns. We conduct places of worship tours to educate our staff. Here, religious leaders explain their faith and traditions in their own places of worship, including temples, mosques, gurdwaras, synagogues, and churches. As I indicated earlier, being able to reflect the community that you serve is helpful, and almost one quarter of our staff come from our diverse communities. We are able to speak over 65 different languages and a significant number of our staff can speak a second language. And I'm joined here today with my colleague, Sergeant Paul Chang, a member of our Police Services Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Bureau. Paul speaks eight languages, which include Mandarin, Hubei, Hakka, Cantonese, Hindi, Punjabi, and English, and of course, Urdu, having born here in Pakistan. <laughs> Additionally, we encourage our officers to engage the newcomer community 
at least once a week at our five immigrant welcome centers and attend and do workshops and presentations on policing, Canadian laws, and the criminal justice system. All to build trust and confidence in the work that we do. I'd just like to show you another short video, a lighthearted video, about two officers going into one of these immigrant welcome centers. This is Constable Amari Watkiss, a 12-year veteran with York Regional Police. You may recognize him and his laugh <laughs> from Cops Read Mean Tweets, our new recruiting video, or one of the many, many community events he attends as an officer in our Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Bureau. Yes, sir, how you doing? Sir? I'm okay, my good man, good to see you. And you give a lot of hugs. <laughs> Very good to see you, sir. <laughs> so I'm doing all right. You know, you're a human, I'm a human. And obviously you don't go hugging everybody. Yeah. They can be a little weird. <laughs> so you have to know there's a limit to the hugs, but what, what's, what's the hug line? What, what's, what's, do you have a daily hug limit? Or? You know what, it's almost like if the person initiates the hug, then I know the, the hug door in? is open. Dog door. And when the hug door is open, I'm right through it, my man. Good to see you. We like to go in when there's nothing wrong. That's our, that's our goal. We want to be there for the communities when it's good. So when it's bad, it's not seen that we're only there because of something negative. Like for me, I grew up in Jane and Finch. It was more of like crime and punishment. They would come into the area only when there was a reason and never just to come and say hello. So that might have been one of the reasons why growing up my mom that really had a positive opinion of officers because you would only see them at the negative times. But coming into this unit and being in here for the last two and a half years, I was able to learn a lot from the community. Like they teach you a lot. You just have to listen. So the work you do in those communities is, that, that's the job, it means you're always that's doing it, right? Exactly. One of the community agencies that we tend to, act, to interact with on a regular basis is the welcome centers. So we have five welcome centers that are positioned throughout the region. During the week we would go in for scheduled drop-ins and uh, now when we go it's, it's very easy because they have an understanding and they have a trust for us. <laughs> hey Lillian, this is Andy. Hi, Andy Patton. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hey Simone, how you? What's this guy's name? It's a great idea. The fact that they have these uh, these um, welcome centers, they do a tons for the newcomer community. And you'll, when you go, you, you'll see it. What does it bring to the people that are here when police come in? It's incredible value, for sure, because they don't have the information and they're often intimidated by police, just seeing him in his uniform. And I'm not the Some smallest guy. <laughs> yeah, and he's tall too, so. But he comes in, hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. And he creates this safe space and this energy that's of great value. Thank you. You're basically letting people know that they're a human. So what, what is policing to you? Like what, what, so, is, what is it all about? So policing to me, policing is just, for me, it's just opportunity to help. Like, and it sounds corny to say, but it's, it's, it's true. Because somebody can be going through an episode and all it takes is a, how are you doing? And all it takes is a, is a soft, calming voice or, or an, an extension of a hand or, or, or a minute of your time. And just, get, and just let people know, ultimately, that we're human beings. That's the most important thing. The uh, leadership approach that we have taken has strengthened our commitment to servicing our citizens and these diverse programs and initiatives form a large part of how we have overcome distrust and fostered positive relationships, and it has paid off in dividends for our police service. Our goal to build trust and confidence with our new immigrant communities has translated into building trust and confidence in the work we do in all communities, immigrant or not. We have become nationally recognized for our community engagement programming. Proud to say that we have been recognized as a top 100 employer in my province for three years running, and this last February, we were recognized across Canada as a top employer for young people. And I'm also pleased to report that we are the safest community of our size in Canada, and we have a satisfaction rating from our community of 95%. Once again, I want to thank you for giving us the honor of being at this conference. Rahat, Sukriya.
Pakistan, Zinabad, Canada, Zindabad. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Eric Jolif. We ask you to please remain on stage. Yes, and next we'd like to invite Mr. Samir Dosal, the President of Canada Pakistan Business Council, and Sergeant Paul Chang to please come up on stage. And we'd also like to invite Mr. Muhammad Asfar Asan, the founding CEO of Nutshell Conference, and also the founder of Corporate Pakistan Group, as our Canadian friends would like to hand out a token of appreciation to Nutshell Conference, the host of the this, uh, of this summit, and also, of course, to Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, may the relationship between Pakistan and Canada forever remain harmonious and make future collaborations continue to be fruitful. Assalamu alaikum Fatima Zarat. My name is Paul Chang, and my name is Karachi, Pakistan. मुझे निकलते हुए 42 साल हो गया और 1976 में मैं यहाँ से निकला और मैं कनाडा पहुँच गया तो अभी मैं 16 साल 16 साल बाद वापस आ रहा हूँ मिलने के लिए आप सबको और आज हमें असफर को बहुत-बहुत शुक्रिया अदा करने चाहते हैं कि उन्होंने हमारे चीफ को यहाँ इनवाइट किया और हम उनको एक शील्ड पेश करने चाहते हैं शुक्र Thank you so much to our Canadian friends, ladies and gentlemen. And would like to ask Mr. Asfar Ahsan to please remain on stage. Yes, because next we're going to invite the Air Chief Marshal, Mr. Sohel Aman, the Chief of Air Staff of Pakistan's Air Force, and also Mr. Muhammad Jawid Ahai, the Chairman of also our host, which is the Martin Dow, to please come up on stage. And would also like to invite our speaker, Mr. Shamshuddin Shay, the CEO of Sint Ingro Coal Mining Company. Ladies and gentlemen, our host and our guest of honor would like to hand out a token of appreciation. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're so very honored to have His Excellency, Mr. Sohail Aman, the Chief of Air Staff of Pakistan's Air Force, here with us. Thank you so much, Mr. Shamshuddin Shay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please allow us to invite to the stage also, after a group photo opportunity, of course. Yes, Ms. Uh, Wendy Hogan, the Customer Experience and Marketing Strategy Director of Oracle of APAC Region, to please come join us on stage. Oh, I guess she is not here. I guess she's going off to catch her flight, ladies and gentlemen. But next, please allow us to also invite Mr. Eric Jolif, the Chief of York of Regional Police of Canada. Please give him a big round of applause. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, may the relationship between Canada and Pakistan continue to be harmonious and collaborations continue to be fruitful, successful and everlasting. And next, we're going to have a group photo session as well. Yes, Your Excellencies, and also Mr. Samir Dosal and Sergeant Paul Chang, we ask you to please come join us for a group photo session together. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please give Our Excellencies the biggest round of applause. Thank you so much.